Today I'm going to uh, show you how to take a depth pass in Daz Studio, how to bring it into Photoshop and make it usable, and then give you some use cases of why you would want to do this. All right, so we're in Daz Studio, and I've got a plant here. And the first thing you want to do is you kind of want to decide, you want to have some idea what you're going to use it for, uh, and that'll determine how detailed the depth pass you want. To, uh, you want. Uh, so this one, I want it to be, it's going to end up being used as a prop, and I'm going to retexture this in Stable Diffusion, um, but it's going to be on the ground. Um, you know what? No, we're going to keep it this way because it's going to be, it's going to be a huge alien flora when it's all said and done. And so it's going to be semi eye level. So I think this um, angle right here will be just fine. Uh, so we got this set up. We got the camera here and we're just going to hit. Oh, uh, we go to the render settings. Go to advanced. Canvases. Hit the plus sign. We're going to change this to depth. And there we go. And I've got it at 1024 by 1024, which should be fine. Uh, the other thing, um, this can actually be a good thing. I don't know. I, you know, honestly, I'm not 100% sure if the denoiser actually does anything, but I feel like I've been getting better results because of it. And it doesn't really need a whole lot of samples. So we're going to go. So we'll go 30 samples with, uh, let's see, and we'll do noise it after 25. And we'll go like this. And you're like, what the heck? This is not, what, what the heck is this? This is just a white uh, image just by itself. Well, this is what we're going to do. We're going to go plant depth. There's information in this uh, that you just can't see. Uh, because for some reason, Daz Studio, instead of having it come out as something that's usable, they have to, you know, make you go through Photoshop to actually create something. So we're going to be coming to here. Uh, it gives gives you this white um, image right here. You can just delete that. There's I don't understand what the heck they're even doing with that, to be honest with you. Uh, we're going to go into this, and we're going to open this with... Photoshop. Now I'm sure there's other programs that you could do this with. Uh, I just have, I don't know of any of them. Um, this is one of the main reasons I even have Photoshop is because he, as far as I know, you can't do this with GIMP, but Hey, if I'm wrong, let me know in the comments below. I would like to be wrong on that. All right. So once again, we bring it in here and it's still just a white square. We're going to fix that. We're going to go into image mode. Oops, image mode, 8 bits per channel, merge. All right, now we kind of see that we have the uh, silhouette of that plant. Still not doing us any good, so we're going to go under method, and we're going to do equal histo histogram, um, hit OK. And now this, it's, it's getting close to what we want, but the problem is that most of the, I mean, any of the programs that... I'm going to use this in, um, use white as the closest and black as the farthest. I don't understand why Daz does it opposite. Um, if you know in the, you know, out there why Daz does it opposite, let me know in the comments. I would really love to know because I still, I haven't found any, but whether it's Blender, whether it's Stable Diffusion, um, any of that stuff, they all have the white closest and the black farther away. So we're going to just go new adjustment layer under layers, invert, hit OK. And there we go. Now we got our white, which is our um, closest. We got, you know, I do, oh, I'm really tempted to, now nah, we're going to leave it the way it is, but I would really like for the act to be completely black. Let's see if I can try this real quick. I'll edit this out if this doesn't work. All right, we're not going to do that part. All right, so we're going to keep the way it is. We're going to export. And we can just keep it 
just keep it as that. Now we have a depth map, a proper depth map that we can actually use. Um, so real quick, I'm going to show you just a use case uh, that I use it for uh, that makes it kind of cool. And so we're going to go into and kind of show you what I already did earlier. I took this mushroom uh, that was like this. I had the death map here and I came up with this. So here we're just going to, oh, uh, let's see here. Operate, we're in uh, text to image. And get rid of this. We're going to bring in this new depth map. Right here. And we're just going to go magical. Um, flower from a fantasy film. Um, we'll keep these things here. Maybe yeah, we'll, we won't do the high res fix first because we want to kind of see what we end up getting out of this. Um, and then we're going to, uh, one thing we want to make sure when we bring this depth map in is that the preprocessor is on none. Otherwise, it's going to create a, a depth map from the depth map, and it doesn't really work. So, I'm going to hit generate. And we're going to see what we get out of it. Oh, whoa, what, what did I do wrong? I... Ha! Ah. I must have had a... Uh... Hold on just a second. Well, that didn't work at all there. That's because I had a, a reference only um, model on there and wasn't actually using it. All right, so we got kind of interesting here. Uh, if we look at our original, what we got here, um, it's basically taken that and added some pretty cool colors. Um, yeah, I'm, I don't, I don't mind this. Uh, the background um, can easily get rid of that since luckily they gave us a background that's pretty contrasting from um, what we're using. But that's interesting. So what I don't. Okay, so one thing that's kind of a little bit off as if you notice here between these two I think that they're I think everything's fine here except for this one for some reason it added a pedal down here where there's zero reason for there to be a pedal um I mean the main thing is that the flower for the most part is lining up with the uh depth map but anyways um that's it for this video. I just kind of wanted to give you an idea of, first of all, how to use a depth map uh, or create a depth map in DAS Studio and then make it usable since it's not even remotely usable directly. Um, and then kind of a use case of where you can use it. Uh, in the next video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this flower and we're gonna bring it into Blender uh, and we're gonna create a mesh out of it. Um, a mesh that we'll then be able to bring back into DAS Studio and use as a prop. Um, even though just to kind of keep your expectations in order, uh, that prop will be uh, somewhat three-dimensional. You will be able to use it and have lighting on it and do some really cool things with it, but it will not be fully 3D. So you will have to play around with the scene to be able to make it usable uh, in uh, DAS Studio. But anyways, um, make sure you hit like, uh, subscribe i'm gonna be i've got a pretty cool workflow that i've been working on and i want to share it with y'all uh, and everybody have a great day